this next one. The email was sent to me ominously with a game that happened on leechess.org between two undisclosed rating of players. I have no idea who is playing what color here. And uh, without further ado, let's 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 get it. And uh, I think I need to swap colors here. Yeah, I'm gonna swap colors. Okay, because it's a King's Indian, and I just want to be on the black side of this anyway. All right, now here is. One of the nuances I wanted to stop and discuss a little bit. This is just, you know, perfect classical King's Indian so far, and white has a lot of options for development. Bishop e2, followed by knight f3, you get to mainline stuff, and I'm gonna recommend the bayonet. If if you play that with white, look it up. Bishop d3, absolutely nothing wrong with this move. I believe this is uh Yasser Sirwan's move. Um, I've seen in some King's Indian books, this move is named after him. And after Castles, this next move by White kind of hurt me some, because if you're going to play Knight F3, play it with the Bishop on E2. And if you're going to play the Sirwan variation, the benefit of putting the Bishop on D3 is you have flexibility to do a lot of things. You can play f3 and transpose into a same issue. You can play f4 and go into an odd four pawns attack situation. You can play bishop g5 and then f4 and hybridize this boss. Knight f3 is one of the worst moves in the position because it ruins some of the flexibility with all these other plans. That's why I would strongly recommend going with knight ge2. And let's look at a, a quick game between Daniel Fernandez and Mel Mukin in... Canberra 2021, and I probably butchered some names in the place. The main idea here is knight d4, and black is supposed to get some, some play this way. c5, rook b8, b5, and black just didn't get enough because he's having to hold on to too much stuff here. And I think the pawn sack earlier just wasn't good. And this is already a, a busted position. He, he's just completely frozen. And white went on to win there with the extra pawn. Easy to understand. So knight g2, if you're going to essay this variation with black or with white, you know, be flexible about it. Knight f3 ruins some of the flexibility. And as a King's Indian player, I have to ask, after knowing the main line's knight g2, what's the difference between knight f3 and knight g2? I have the extra option. Now, e5 was played in the game, but more accurate is bishop g4, because I am taking away this option. Where we have now knight fd7, I'm gaining a tempo, hitting the d4 pawn. Knight c6, another, I'm pressure, 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 pressure. d5 takes, knight ce5 takes, and this is akin to a Nimzo Indian position where Early in the game, you play bishop b4, take c3. The knight is better than the bishop in this closed pawn structure, and you're playing against those doubled pawns. So black had a pretty straightforward path to the better long-term middle slash end game here. e5, I mean, it's a natural king's Indian move. Nothing, nothing wrong with it by any means, but critical is comparing what you know and trying to take advantage of the idea is left behind. Knight f3, bishop g4. After queen e8, d5, bishop g4. Now this one is now not as good. And this is a fundamental mistake in a king's Indian structure. Because with the center locked, we are playing for f5, without question. The bishop is needed for long-term attacking purposes after f5. So this one, not so good. What I would like to see, a5 stops the natural progression of b4, c5, because if we're playing for f5, our arrow with the pawns is pointing towards playing f5. His arrow is pointing towards c5, so we'd like to go b4, c5. a3, knight a6, knight h5, and that would be the typical way to play this type of King's Indian position. 
first do some prophylaxis against White's idea and then go all out with the attack. Like I said, again, the bishop will be needed because we have some lines here where we can take, then go bishop g4. The rook's very healthy and helpful. If you decide to take me, I take back with the pawn, follow up with queen g6, and again, the pawn moves. Bishop is very helpful with the attack. And all these variations, I'm hoping to emphasize why this is a bad move, because when you put the bishop there, he's encouraging you to trade. And now the attacking prospects long term are non-existent for black in regards to f5. And as the position opens up, it's going to favor the bishop here north. So white is winning as black has no reasonable counterplay. Knight bd7, h6, and bishop h4, I, I put some question marks on it. We should be going bishop d2, knight c5, and it's hard to find counterplay because we don't have the f5 break. Our bishop on g7 is the pawn with a funny hat, the, the variation, and white's getting what he should be getting. Opening up the position with b4, followed up by breaking through on the queen side, and white has a clinical plan here. But bishop h4, now we're getting something. g5, knight c5, queen d7. Okay, we got a bishop off the board, very nice. And here, this is starting to get critical because white has went from much better technically winning position to we've lost the thread and now it's going to get worse. He should continue with the main plan with c5, get the break going, try to get more life in your bishop. Queen h5 was played. Mr. Natural over here, f5, big threat, getting some space, f4 at the right moment, f3. Queen's starting to look a little, uh, little suspect on h5. Takes, takes. Knight e4. Uh-huh. Knight of six. And around here, white should start being like, I don't know what my queen's doing over here. She needs to come back. And after h5, both sides are getting a little something. I'd say it's probably roughly equal this point, but I have a slight preference for white as I think black's going to have trouble breaking through with the remaining pieces he has. Knight takes f6 was played. c5. And now rook c1 is a good follow-up to continue with the pressure and the attack. In the main game, h4 was played. And I've been saying for the last few moves, the lady's looking kind of suspect on h5. We shut the door now. Again, where are you going? I don't know. And white's pretending, you know, oh, my lady's fine. Rook a3 should be played more than likely. Get, get some counterplay. Bishop h2 is played. All right, we're taking away another escape square with king h7. And here, white, I feel like, does have a way out of this. c takes d6. Rook c3. Bishop g3. And now, very, very classy move. Rook c7. And this is brilliant defense and definitely engine generated. I don't play like this because I'm not, like, good. <laughs> so, yeah, I can't take any credit for that. But the queen trap is definitely on its way here in the main game. And this was only defense that um, could be finagled. c6 was played as the writing on the wall, I think, was starting to be seen. But it's too late at this point. Rook g3. Rook g6, and yeah, that's right. He trapped the lady. It's over. It's it's done. And uh, I think this was the main reason this this game was uh, was submitted because he trapped the lady. And you always enjoy that. Yeah, you, you always enjoy a nice 
queen trap because the most powerful piece on the board typically has so many options. And the queen on h5, white did it to himself. Queen takes g4, and we'll go quickly through the end here because it is a matter of technique. And when your opponent's playing g4 and open up the position even more, makes it really easy as the queen can do work. And white resigned in this position. Nice topsy-turvy game, mistakes on both sides, which we can learn from. This is my favorite type of game to analyze. I have no idea the, the ratings of the players. I, I'd like to at least have that context in the future. But overall, very interesting game where we're able to see long-term ideas on both sides in an opening. I mean, especially if this is an opening I know pretty well for both colors. So I think I can give some decent instruction on it. But like I said, nice queen trap and overall interesting ideas from both sides. Thank you for your submission. And as always, for viewer game analysis, watch your game analyzed. Send your game to nmbtillis at gmail.com. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification. Help us out. Thanks.